This is it. We're about to be caught up with Welcome to Plathville. Hi, my name is Danny, and I've been rewatching TLC's show Welcome to Plathville. So far, I've watched seasons one, two, three, and the first nine episodes of season four, as well as all of season five as it was premiering. If you haven't seen my previous videos, I highly recommend going back and starting at the beginning. I've also covered things that have happened to the family outside of the TV show. Episode 10 begins with Micah hanging out with a friend named Michael. They met the very first day that Micah made it to LA and they were both working as assistants taking care of spoiled Hollywood dogs. Michael was also homeschooled and had initially wanted to be a pastor, but is now pursuing art. Michael has a solo art show coming up and asked Micah if he would like to bartend it. Does it pay or is it just- It doesn't pay. <laughs> In Cairo, Barry is helping Kim turn the apartment above the dance studio into a decorated rental property. I know Kim loves her rental properties, but an Airbnb above a dance studio sounds awful. After giving him what she feels like is an adequate amount of time, Kim decides it's time to talk divorce with Barry. She talks about how Barry's treatment of her when he was grumpy or upset affected her. And when she brought it to his attention, he didn't change much. I, I felt like you were only trying to do just enough to get me to stay, but not really valuing me. It's clear that Barry is coming to terms with what she is saying and realizing there's no going back now. Before they officially mentioned divorce, we cut over to Mariah and Ethan at the beach. Mariah then pitches an idea. I think that it would be really, really like a good um, thing for all of us siblings to be together on Joshua's birthday. If you've forgotten, Joshua is their younger sibling who tragically passed when he was just over a year old. While visiting his grave was never a tradition for the Plath family, Mariah has been intentional about going for Joshua's birthday every year since she got her license. Switching back to Micah, he is now bartending at Michael's art show. And we get to see my favorite duo in the show, Hayden and Capiche. Oh. They also brought their friend in Tia, and Micah is excited to see her again. There's definitely a little something something there. There's something something. But Capiche isn't being a true wingman. Do what? <laughs> I said, where do you put the drinks when you're done with them? I was trying to talk to him, and Capiche just stopped the conversation. The next few minutes are just Antia saying she wishes Micah would ask her out and Micah saying he thinks she's cute. In fun news, Olivia and Mariah have installed a pole in the bedroom for them to practice more at home. And when Ethan the cat is away, Ryan and Olivia the mice will play. They're also beginning to plan everything for visiting Joshua's grave. I do want to really focus on what Mariah says here as she acknowledges the complicated situation because it's important later on. I'm planning to have two separate visits to the grave, one with the siblings and one with my parents. Also, Olivia has now reached out to Barry and is hoping to reconnect with him and the younger Plath kids. However, Ethan and Olivia are both still distant from Kim. This is also the first time Mariah is hearing about the reconnection between Olivia and Barry. Now that she invited my dad, it kind of complicates things for me. Mariah feels like things are being done on Olivia's terms and that Mariah hasn't been included in that full decision making despite all of this being her idea. I think that's completely valid, but it just seems like a lack of communication on both of their ends. If Olivia is upsetting Mariah or making her feel like she's not in control, Mariah needs to tell Olivia that. They make it to Cairo and pick up the siblings. Kim is not home at this moment. It is really a nice step forward to have Olivia just here today. I think it's really awesome that Olivia is trying. I know it has to be super stressful for her to be in that house and not know where every relationship stands. There are some deep hurts between her and the Plath parents, but she's trying to move on and grow. While Olivia is catching up with the girls, the boys are talking in the living room. One thing I find interesting is how Ethan is trying so hard to relate to Barry. He keeps bringing up the time he and Olivia were separated. I remember when me and Olivia separated, like when she left, I was like, I will literally do anything to go back and like try again. Barry also encourages Ethan to consider talking to Kim and getting her side of the story as far as the divorce. Ethan says he's been considering it. Meanwhile, Kim is at the apartment above the dance studio. I get that she's upset that she isn't invited right now, but also she did this to herself. 
You cannot treat people like garbage and then be shocked when they don't want you to be a part of their life. I really don't understand how I've hurt Olivia. I really don't. Well, that's pretty wild considering you've literally hurt her on camera. I can only imagine what you've said and done off camera. I know I'll have company tomorrow when it's Joshua's birthday and we're at the cemetery. The episode ends with all the kids heading to the old Plath farm and sleeping there for the night. And Olivia shares this important piece of information. To my knowledge, it's just gonna be the kids going to the gravesite. Again, I want to remember that because Olivia isn't set up for success right now and we're getting close to seeing what I consider her worst moment on the show. Episode 11 begins at the Plath farm and considering it's their childhood home, everyone begins reminiscing. There is a lot of things that I didn't like about my upbringing, but I guess I just see it in a different way because I've had so much time away. As they're all running around, a surprise guest shows up. I find it so fascinating that Micah cannot find himself an apartment in LA, but he can buy plane tickets constantly. I don't understand. But this also means all the Plath kids, minus Hosanna, are together again. It's clear that Kim is hurting and I think she makes a valid point here. I feel like it's extremely hurtful to have a gathering on my deceased son's birthday and to not invite the mother. I mean, like that doesn't even make sense. I just wish she also acknowledged this awful situation is primarily caused by her ostracizing Olivia. Karma has her hand in this and Kim doesn't like that one bit. What is so confusing to me about this episode is how no one is under the same understanding. Olivia thinks the gravesite is a siblings only thing. Mariah said there would be two separate visits. And here's what Ethan thinks. I thought everybody was gonna be there, including mom. It's not like he's planning to talk with Kim or make up with her though. Uh, I'm not going to the grave to, to talk to my mom because that's just not where I'm at. Let's also hold on to this comment from Mariah. Olivia has been my best friend for eight years now, and I know what she's been through and where she's at, but also lately, I've become a lot closer to both my parents too. Very interesting. Also, the assumptions are everywhere. No one seems to ever want to communicate. I was assuming Olivia would come, even if my mom is there. Thankfully, Mariah does finally say something to Olivia and lets her know everyone is invited. If you're not comfortable, that is 100% understandable and you don't have to come. I want to take a step back and remember that Kim has deeply hurt Olivia. That hurt has resulted in a fear that we've seen from Olivia in how scared she is even being near Kim's property. When Olivia agreed to go on this trip, she was told she wouldn't have to see Kim. So this is all a huge shock to her and it's pretty evident she has been triggered. I don't know how to respond or know what to do. I just feel like panicked. I can't speak to Olivia's experience, but I can speak to my own. After months and then years of stepping away from a relationship where I was consistently gaslit and told that my reality of being constantly hurt and ignored was untrue, I began to doubt that those things ever happened. It felt like I was crazy and I had made it all up, but I didn't. And I still am at, not at a point where I'm able to confront that relationship. So I really do resonate with Olivia here. I currently dread something big happening within my family and having to decide on whether I suck it all up or I don't go. It's really hard and I have so much love for Olivia in this. Some viewers do not. It's also odd how quick Mariah switches from 100% understanding to this. Just constantly working around her feelings but today is not about her. What I do agree with Mariah on is how Olivia wasn't able to check in on Mariah that day. Joshua's death was incredibly traumatic. So this day is a lot for Mariah without the stress of checking in on Olivia. Both of their feelings are valid and it's a really tough situation. I also completely forgot Ethan said this. I have no idea why I ever had hope they'd make it through. I don't understand the emotions that she must be feeling to be acting this way, because what I see is a tantrum. How sad for a husband to look down on his wife that much. I'm convinced this entire thing would have played out so much better if he was just there to support her, to tell her that her feelings are valid, but that he wants her to try and go anyway. One thing that I also think is important incredibly important to remind ourselves of is that this isn't something the family does. 
This is a first for them to all go to Joshua's grave on his birthday. It has not been a tradition or norm for them. It's also crazy how they're all telling the narrative that Olivia is making the day about her when Kim won't stop talking about how she was excluded last night. They're both very stuck in their emotions throughout this episode. Most of the children would have wanted me there. Basically, Ethan and Olivia were the only ones that didn't want me there. As I'm sure you expected, everyone but Olivia goes to the gravesite. Well, Olivia goes, but she stays in a separate car with a crew member. Looking at Ethan and how he's kind of avoiding eye contact with me, I'm just feeling like he's probably not gonna talk to me today. Mariah also shares how she was very close to the accident when Joshua was run over and how much that has impacted her. When I go to think of him, I think that's the first thing that I think of. So she doesn't remember a sweet baby brother. She remembers a horrific accident when she was six years old. I am constantly heartbroken to hear how little help these parents and kids had after this traumatic event. But that's why Mariah wanted to get everyone together. She wanted to remember the good times of having Joshua around. And the stress of Olivia isn't ideal for her, obviously. Ethan also shares that he coped with Joshua's death the way he copes now. He completely shuts down and goes to do something else. That way I don't have to deal with it. At the end of the visit, Ethan does quickly say something to Kim. Not today, but someday I do want to talk to you. Okay. Like, just um, about everything that's going on. Okay. Afterwards, the kids decide to go to a pool hall and Olivia drops Ethan off. Per usual, Ethan is running away and wants to wait to talk things out, but Olivia is chasing him down. <laughs> If I matter to you, you're to what I talk. Olivia expresses that she feels like he's been rude to her all day, and Ethan has a valid, but tough, response. Well, I feel like you were rude because you didn't show up to my dead brother's grave, so that's on you. And that comment was a slap to the face for Olivia. Oh, I didn't know you wanted me there so bad. She admits that his comment was harsh, but it was truly a glimpse into all the pain he was in that she had been ignoring. And this is why I think it's one of Olivia's worst moments in the show. She got so triggered and went into such a trauma response that she abandoned her husband and best friends in the process. One issue I do have is that Micah keeps saying that Olivia is allowed to be mad, but should have valued the gravesite more. I don't think Olivia was mad at all. She is hurt and was led to believe one thing and then informed another. Then she has no one to talk through these big emotions with because they all got annoyed with her. So you were so wrapped up in your own feelings that you couldn't think about anybody else? Is that what was going on? <laughs> Many people may disagree with me here, but I think Olivia is both valid and made an awful mistake. Coming from the future, I know she apologizes for it and Ethan moves on. I hope that she is able to find a good therapist to work through all of this with and not have her emotions be so in control of her. I feel like I really let them down. But this is the beginning of Mariah's breaking point with Olivia. I love Olivia, but if somebody's gonna make me choose, I'm gonna choose the person that's not making me choose. If someone can comment below and explain to me what she just said, I'd appreciate that. That wild quote also brings us to the end of episode 11. Not a lot of good things happening at the moment. Episode 12 begins with Micah taking Antia on a date back in LA. They do a cute little picnic and practice reading lines of a Shakespeare play Antia is in. I hope, I hope this is going somewhere. I definitely think they're both into each other. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Tampa, it's Olivia's birthday and Ethan is preparing. I thought instead of like taking her out to a restaurant or something like that, I would make her dinner instead. While he's making jalapeno poppers, Mariah asks how Olivia is doing after the visit to Cairo. I don't feel like I need to add a ton of commentary here because Mariah's reaction is enough. I mean, she's not crying or anything, so I'm assuming she's fine. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Ethan doesn't understand Olivia and doesn't care to. Mariah also hasn't talked to Olivia about the situation. Mariah admits she doesn't want to be the one to bring it up, so the conversation hasn't happened yet. Ethan then mentions this is his first time making food for Olivia since the second episode of season two, where he tried to make her pancakes. 
Nathan shows up to Ethan and Mariah trying to marinate the steak with balsamic vinegar. That's not exactly a marinating sauce, though. I just find it wild that Ethan and Mariah do not know how to cook. Even just grilling or making pasta seems like a challenge to them. No wonder Lydia was so stressed out throughout the years. The conversation about Cairo is then forced by the producers in a post interview when they ask Ethan and Olivia about what happened. I can't explain my side of things and, and be understood. And so I, I want to deal with it, but I don't know how to address it. And then we go to the reveal of dinner. You cooked? Mm -hmm. I made those, those are jalapeno poppers, and I made the potatoes, and I cooked steak. Olivia loves this surprise and is overjoyed. Thank you. You're welcome. For those of you who have watched season five, do you remember when Ethan tells Olivia she needs to cook three meals a day because that's one of the only keys to a man's heart? Well, this is his reply when Olivia tells him he should cook more and maybe being a bad cook is only in his head. Because if I say I'm going to cook, then I'll have to cook and I don't like cooking. These plats are wild. But in positive plath news, Barry was kind enough to remember and reach out to Olivia for her birthday by sending her a text. And Ethan's gift to her is a cute little motorcycle jacket. A few days later, Mariah and Ethan go to Cairo to visit the family and for Ethan to get his motorcycle. I swear these people do not work at all. On the way up there, Ethan decides he's ready to have a conversation with Kim. Ethan explains that this is the first time he's ever sat down and had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with his mom. The last few years, anytime I've thought about what it would take to bring us together again, my answer was always, it would take a miracle. Well, Kim, here's your miracle. But Ethan isn't messing around and cuts straight to it and asks Kim why she's divorcing Barry. I feel like I'm not valued, but I'm just at a point where I, I need to do what I need to do for me. And Ethan shares the same frustration almost all of his siblings have expressed. I definitely feel a pang of resentment when I see things that don't add up with my mom, like in the things that she taught us to do that she doesn't do. He asks her what she's doing differently than what she did with his upbringing. She mentions how the kids still can't have soda unless it's for a birthday party. And he stops her to say sugar was never the issue. The issues included schooling and dating. One issue I personally have with Kim is that she thinks education should just be preparing that child to pursue their interest. And because of that, she wasn't strict about Ethan doing his schoolwork and allowed him to go work on his cars. I understand that school was boring and awful for the majority of us, but that doesn't mean it isn't important. My intention for, the, for all of the children has always been to find what they're passionate about and help them in that. Again, that's great, but high school level education is still incredibly important. The conversation isn't going bad, but it's definitely not easy. I feel like I've tried. Yeah, I don't know because I feel like he didn't try. I know that had to crush her, but Ethan is entitled to that viewpoint and I'm glad he straight up told it to Kim. She's by no means the worst mother that ever existed, but I'd never trust her to homeschool my children. Even in this season, it's Lydia doing the teaching for the little girls. Ethan then goes on to say that the way he and his siblings were taught about dating made it unlikely for them to understand there were other ways to find a spouse. Ethan felt like he had to marry the first person that he had a mutual connection with. And it was never taught to any of us that there was another way. Kim apologizes multiple times, and I'm not sure if it was genuine, but I think she thought it was. But overall, it's a good conversation. She is my mom and I do love her. So they're not exactly friends, but they're definitely not enemies anymore. And that takes us to the season finale, the final episode that I need to rewatch. Season four, episode 13. Buckle up because we have a lot more drama up ahead. Episode 13 opens with Mariah, Micah, Ethan, and Olivia all going to Jamaica. The location was picked because Olivia is shooting a wedding there. The rest of the gang is there because it's Ethan's birthday. Just a reminder, no one has talked through everything that happened with Joshua's gravesite, so there's definitely some tension. But good news for Mariah is she can legally drink there. It means that for the whole time here, I will be drinking with my siblings and partying it up. 
They have an authentic Jamaican meal and then head to the hotel for some drinks on the beach. It seems like a sweet little night. In a post interview, Olivia shares that she is skeptical of Ethan wanting a relationship with Kim again. What if she got control of him again? Like he and I are learning how to have a healthy relationship away from that. I think the fear is rational and valid. However, I think she needs to tread lightly because she doesn't like Kim controlling Ethan. So she shouldn't be controlling of him either. I know many argue she already is, but I feel like he's very much made his own decisions consistently. In Cairo, Kim and Barry sit the kids down and talk about the future. We are moving forward with a divorce. It's clear the kids are pretty rocked by this news because they were all holding onto the hope their parents would work it out. Let's admire Barry's posture here. Mom is okay and will always be there for them and dad is okay and will always be there for them. What a guy. For several minutes, they discuss the possible living arrangements and admit they don't know what they'll do yet. Both Barry and Kim want to be the one to stay at the house. Amber shares some raw and valid feelings. I just remember mom saying that they would never get a divorce and that it'd be forever. And now her saying that she'll always be here for us. I don't know if I can fully trust her. Lydia asks a question that I just know crushed Kim. How would you girls feel if I moved in with dad? Back in Jamaica, the group is visiting a Rastafari village, and the kids with no pop culture knowledge are in full bloom. So you've never heard of Bob Marley? No, I hadn't. Oh, can you imagine that? No. <laughs> <laughs> he goes on to explain how Rastafari is a relationship between all living things. So the journey of Rastafari is about peace. Annoyingly, Micah says in an interview that he hopes this lesson is clicking with Olivia, as if she is the only person struggling to have and bring peace. I don't love First Man's comment here, but obviously he doesn't know the details of this family. He just knows these kids grew up without technology and on a farm, which is inherently good. I just want to send a shout out to your parents because your way of life needs to become the trend. They move on to try the sacrament, or as we know it, weed. Everything felt like kind of cartoonish and hilarious. I'm shocked Ethan gave it a go. He was so against trying it when he went to California with Olivia. In Cairo, Kim is at the apartment above the dance studio and decided to invite Lydia over to do her nails. Lydia cuts right to it and begins talking about how she can only imagine how exhausting it must have been to have nine children. How Kim likely had to pour from an empty cup at times, but also that her exhaustion cannot lead to her not being there mentally and emotionally for the younger girls, and it has. This is why Lydia is still around and not ready to leave. I need to know that when it is time for me to move out, they'll be okay and yeah. they'll have someone they can cling to. In an interview, Kim makes a great point. I feel like most moms do that. They do everything for everybody else and they put themselves last. This is definitely true for so many moms out there and it's not inherently a bad thing unless it is the only thing a mom does. She needs to and deserves to occasionally put herself first. I think it's perfectly fine that Kim is divorcing Barry, but I also think that she mutually agreed to have all of these kids with him. She agreed to outnumber herself with kids. So in the divorce, she can't just abandon the kids. It's also clear in this conversation that Lydia feels abandoned. She used to be quite close with Kim and that has changed. Simultaneously though, she thanks Kim for being a more involved mother than what Kim had. I think that's pretty amazing for Lydia to be only 18 and see this fuller perspective that many teenage girls can't see with their moms. I know I rarely had that level of grace. And I'm just really thankful for everything you've yeah. done and all the times you have been there for me. It's way more than you ever had. Yeah. Although I don't love that she never apologizes, Kim does admit she is trying and that's all she can really do at this point. It's obvious she's quite overwhelmed with her life at the moment. While Ethan is out parasailing, Micah begins asking Olivia a bunch of questions, mostly trying to figure out if the message about peace, love and forgiveness from first man yesterday changed her opinion of his family. Oh yeah, I love all your siblings and I have a relationship with your dad now I'm working on and I'm happy with that. I think that was a great answer, but Micah pulls for more and asks about Kim. 
I don't know Micah. I don't want to be pressured into having relationships that aren't good for me, and I'll decide what's good for me, and I'll figure it out on my own, and you and Mariah have chosen differently than me, and that's okay. I also hate how Micah is acting like he cares about Olivia here, while also ignoring her very obvious agitation and lack of interest in having this conversation. I want to understand why Olivia does not like my parents, and why it's taking her so long to get over whatever hurt her. So here's a perfect example of what Olivia was talking about. She's constantly getting asked to explain why she is upset with and basically terrified of Kim. And once she finally shares the credit card story, which we'll get to, she's called a liar. Micah has shown he doesn't care about Olivia. Mariah joins in to bring up what happened at the grave. Another thing I find frustrating about this conversation is how Micah and Mariah make it seem like the only way you can forgive someone is to go back to your relationship with them. But in reality, forgiveness can look different for every scenario you're in. Just so you know where I'm at, I really miss the old days when not the lifestyle we lived, but just the good times and hanging out with the family. I'm not that person anymore. Mariah then mentions how the whole family, including Kim, will be going to the river for Ethan's birthday and how she would love Olivia to be there. Olivia doesn't give an immediate answer and they head out to the boat. I find it so odd that Micah and Mariah sort of cornered Olivia into this conversation while Ethan was busy and they did it on a vacation. Also, they're there because of Olivia's work. So it just felt like weird timing overall. A good conversation? Poor timing. I think we're all just done. Yeah. And I feel bad because then we feel like we're not validating Olivia's feelings, but we've all done our best to make her feel validated in so many ways for a long time. Yeah. I know Olivia avoided overly trash talking Kim and getting into specifics with Micah and Mariah, but it is wild how quickly they will turn to call her a liar about the credit card when that's a fraction of the answer they've been begging for from Olivia. Moving forward to them, all now being back in Tampa, Ethan shares that his nose is all scratched up from jumping into the shallow end while being in Jamaica. Anyways, Olivia takes a moment to apologize for pushing Micah and Mariah away when they asked about the river trip. She then apologizes for everything that happened at the farm when they were going to visit Joshua's grave. Olivia says sorry for not being very kind to me, and I really appreciate that. They continue to admit they don't understand why Olivia is so unwilling to mend the relationship between her and Kim. What is odd to me is Ethan's confusion because he was there for a lot of it and once agreed with her. Just because he's changing his mind doesn't mean Olivia has to be on the same timeline. I don't mean to speak for you or you, but I have a hard time understanding why it affects you so much. Micah then tells her that grudges hurt her and Olivia responds with one of my favorite lines from this whole show. My boundary is not based on the grudge I have. And now we get to hear the credit card story for the first time after the producer asks Olivia why she can't face Kim. Olivia explains how she was 16 when she met Kim and felt very important around her. I trusted her more than I did my own mom. As a reminder, Olivia is one of 10 kids and she does not currently have a relationship with the majority of her family of origin. So Kim played a very important motherly figure in Olivia's life as she was becoming an adult. And you loved her? <laughs> but that changed when Olivia realized how transactional the relationship was. I felt like I was only of value to her if I did what she wanted me to do. And here's the story almost all of us should know by now. His mom was using his credit card and buying things for herself and not paying him back. Then Olivia changes the password to the account and refuses to let Kim know it. And that was the first time she ever blew up and yelled at me and slammed the door on me when she had me come meet her in town over that. And that is when Kim decided to tell Olivia she had the devil in her and their relationship was shattered. Back to the living room conversation, Ethan says he's at the end of his rope with all of this drama. What is honestly the worst part of this conversation is how the Plath kids are asking Olivia to meet them where they are in their relationship with their parents and how Olivia doesn't have to be overjoyed about it, but they're annoyed she isn't forgiving and overjoyed. It's so confusing what they actually want from her. But now it's the day of the river trip, and of course, Kim is still wearing her seatbelt wrong. I mean, I haven't done anything fun with Ethan in literally years. And Olivia has decided to go with her brother Nathan, but left earlier than everyone else. Why'd they have to leave early? I don't know. I don't know. Don't care. 
I don't know and don't care sounds like the right answer. I think the answer is so incredibly obvious, but these kids are oblivious. She obviously wants a way out if it's too much to handle. She wants to get there early and be prepared for what's to come. The Platts do not understand how stressful the situation is for Olivia and how much it must have taken for her to give it a go. However, I do agree with them that she should have told them she was leaving early. That's a bit too conflict avoidant of her to just go and wait for them to figure it out. Given how things started, I am suspecting drama, but I don't know. Everyone shows up to the river and they begin gathering around the picnic tables, which are on a ledge above where Nathan and Olivia are sitting. Olivia made a bad assumption that everyone would go straight to the pool where she was. I'm not gonna walk up there and, and I'm just gonna stay right here and like I'll see them when they come down here. But they stayed up by the picnic tables. It felt like the moment was past or whatever and like it's you insert yourself in the middle of something and it's weird if you're already not feeling like you really wanna be there or should be there or are wanted there. This whole thing pisses Mar Mariah off because she can see Olivia and Nathan and feels like this is drama. Considering they're both staying out of the way, I struggle to see the issue. They all wanted Olivia to come and they're pissed at her degree of involvement, but then they call her controlling. Meanwhile, Olivia is frustrated because she didn't realize Mariah had planned to do presents and have lunch. None of that was communicated to Olivia and that's what led to the assumption that everyone would go straight to the pool. So as usual, communication is a mess, but Olivia and Nathan make an attempt to understand. What are y'all doing up here? You should have come up and seen. Oh, you didn't invite us. This is ridiculous. And the arguing begins. I was just told something different was happening and they didn't know that was we, happening. You, we told you what was happening. We told you, do not play like you didn't know what was gonna go on. This season is full of harsh, but understandable comments. My family is going through a divorce and we are here to be with them. Mariah then goes on to rant to Ethan and he tells her just to ignore them and let them be. Again, a really weird way to treat your wife. He just doesn't care about her at all. After a quick cool down, Nathan suggests they go eat with the plats and pretend nothing happened. You want a sticky hot gummy worm? <laughs> <laughs> then the whole family surrounds Olivia and Kim gets a small interaction. Because they're hot. Hi. Mariah's mood changes when she sees the effort from Olivia. I think I just have found a little bit of extra love in my heart for Olivia. No, I'm proud of her. And then they have a fun day swimming. I love how bogus they did Kim with this shot. How cold is that water? Also, Mariah and Olivia make up. I'm honestly trying and I'm gonna f up, but I'm trying. You're doing really good. Thanks. Just seeing everybody so happy to be together. I'm really proud of my family. The episode ends with everyone recapping their year and looking forward to the future. Ethan mentions that their lease in Tampa will be over in a few months, and then he wants to move back to Cairo for a while to help his family and fix up his cars. And where would Olivia live? Rewatching the show was definitely good for me because I don't know why I ever had hope in their relationship. The season ends with this cute little quote from Lydia. Whatever you're doing, enjoy it. And that is all for Welcome to Plathville. We have reached the finish line. If there's ever any well-developed updates or a season six, I'll be right here at Danny XX Green watching it. Okay, bye.